We're approaching mid-March now, which means it's the perfect time to be sowing our tomatoes and basil, which is what I'm going to be sowing inside the pie town today because it's a little bit breezy out here. Um, and I'll be sowing a few flowers as well, so come join me. I also want to say a massive thank you so, so much. You helped me reach my milestone. I've now got 100,000 of you watching along, which is incredible. I mean, that number just, I can't even imagine it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. It's been um, a real journey and I'm so glad that I've got you here along for the ride. Now to give myself a bit of extra working space today, I'm gonna drop these outside with my honesty as well, just to start to harden them off because it's a little bit breezy today, which will just get them used to outdoor conditions. Um, but yeah, also to give my table a bit more room. So let's go through some of the varieties that I'm going to be sowing today. Um, starting off with the basil, we've got a variety called Napolitano Boloso. Sorry, my Italian is terrible. <laughs> and I believe that's um, a basil that I grew a few years ago and the leaves are absolutely enormous so if you like your pestos you like your sort of tomato-y sauces then that's going to be a good one because you get a lot of leaf per plant and we've also got basil dark opal which as the name suggests it's a very dark purpley colored basil and i like this for the color um I don't find it tastes quite as good in my opinion as the green, but the two of them together look gorgeous in a salad. And also when this one flowers, you get the most beautiful purple spike with little lilac um, flowers coming off it. So it's gonna be great for um, that as well. Not that we really want it to go to flower. Um, and we've also, my third variety of basil, is called Greek basil, which I find not many people are as familiar with but this is a very tiny leafed um, basil. And you might think, well, why do I want small leaves? I want big leaves. But the benefit of Greek basil compared to others is that this basil is perfect for drying. Whereas your normal basils, they really don't always dry that well. Um, but this one dries perfectly. I believe it is actually the basil that you get in your dried condiments, you know, in the supermarkets for um, that sort of thing. Um, this one I find is much, much slower growing than your traditional large leafed basils, but it makes a really compact, bushy, dense little plant that looks great in pots. You know, if you've got a balcony or a patio garden, this is great for that. And also I'm pretty sure it has um, mosquito... Uh, what's the word? <laughs> it drives away mosquitoes. So I hear. Um, so yes, very aromatic and great for cooking with. I've also got some coriander on the subject of herbs. Um, these seeds are a year out of date, but they should be absolutely fine. And now that we're in the cooler start of spring, it should be a great time to start them because if you leave it too late, when it gets really hot, that's when they bolt. So coriander is one of those that you've got to sow regularly to keep harvesting um, before they go to seed. Now we're on to the tomatoes and all of my seeds apart from one are actually from Wilco's this year and I often get them from places like Real Seeds um, but this year I'm just sticking to some basics because I didn't want to spend a lot because tomatoes, shock horror, aren't one of my favourite crops to grow. I don't eat them raw <laughs> which surprises a lot of people. Um, but I'm only growing cherry tomatoes this year because I love to roast them like Mediterranean style with loads of those herbs um, like basil and we put some courgette with it and make a nice Mediterranean style veg. Um, so my first variety is just called tumbling tomato red. So this is one that's good for things like hanging baskets. Um, how tall? Mm -mm -mm does not need the side shoots removing. Well, that's easy. And I'm trying to keep things easy this year because I'm gonna have so many flowers growing with the wedding um, that my tomatoes, I'm just gonna put them in and you know, they're not my, as I say, they're not an important crop for me, but I'll always want to have them. Now, my next one is gonna be great for containers because it only grows to about that tall. 
and it's a variety of tomato called House Dwarf Cherry. And I picked these up from Real Seeds last year. And I actually grew it indoors. And I did get a few tomatoes, but I think it would have been better outside or in a polytunnel in a pot. So it's a, I'll just read the description for you. A unique heirloom variety originally from Russia. So that kind of suggests it can cope well with cold weather, right? Uh, then brought to Canada in the 1890s. This dwarf tomato plant has been bred for growing in pots on a windowsill. It makes a short and sturdy bush around one foot tall that is heavily laden with round red cherry tomatoes. Now, I just want to grow these because they're going to look great in pots and it's going to look really ornamental and um, great for decorating as well as eating and I think if I can keep some of these outside my front door at home then even better but as I say it does grow well on a window ledge I just don't have any I've got bay windows that get a lot of sun but we don't have any ledges <laughs> which is a bit of a problem uh, the next one is called sun baby which is a nice yellowy variety I'm hoping this is similar to sun gold Sun Gold, a lot of you probably know about if you've already grown tomatoes before. It's a orangey yellow variety and it's super, super sweet. It is an F1, so you have to buy seeds of it every year because if you save them, they're not going to be as true to type as the ones that you buy. They might be very similar, but they won't be exactly a Sun Gold. Um, so yes, this one should be quite sweet. It says an attractive, thin-skinned and mouth-watering cherry tomato. Uh, developing around 50 fruits per truss. That's quite impressive. Um, and then my last tomato is just called tomato red cherry. As I say, I'm keeping it simple this year. No fancy varieties, nothing that's particularly rare, unique. Um, I know a lot of people this year are really into the really rare and unusual ones like um, is it Brad's Atomic Grape and you get galaxy ones and really unusual purple ones. Um, yeah, tomatoes aren't really my thing. That's more my chilies. So uh, I'm sorry if you're here for unusual varieties. I'm just keeping it simple. <laughs> and whilst we're here, we might as well go through the flowers as well. Obviously, wedding flowers. Um, my first one is called Scabious Stern Gurkle, which is the drumstick scabious which is more grown for the seed head that it creates after it's flowered. So it creates a whitish sort of flower. And then the seed head is this gorgeous, gorgeous little pin cushion of tiny little cones, little shuttlecocks all together in a ball. I'll put a picture up because I'm probably just ruining this description. Um, yes, so I need to be sewing these. And also some of my first proper sort of you know cottage garden flowers that I'm growing this year are going to be my cosmos and I've got cosmos purity and cosmos gazebo white you might imagine why <laughs> for the wedding um, but also I was actually given a packet of seeds from Chilton along with their new catalogue their seed catalogue which by the way is gorgeous let me show you Ta-da! And that's actually the variety that it is that I got free. And it's called Apricotta. And it's that just gorgeous, like lemony, yellowy, pink, pink, pink and peach. Um, and yes, if you don't already buy from Chilton's, I mean, it's just, I just love their colour themed pages. It's really helpful if you, like me, enjoy a nice select colour palette. And the pictures are just absolutely beautiful do love Chilton. I think that's about it. Let's get sewing. Oh yeah, I also need to pot up my Kobe Scandons. This is the cup and saucer vine that I've been growing at home under a grow light. And look, it's growing so, so well. It needs some little, a pole or a cane to cling onto because these tendrils are desperately, desperately searching for something. It's got a few weeds there because I used homemade compost. That's fine. I just pluck those out. Um, but yeah, we've got some great roots on there. Um, yeah, going to get them potted up. Ooh. 
actually just bought some new seed compost that I've not used before. Uh, it's from Rocket Grow. Have you used it? I just picked it up from my nearest green garden centre. Um, so yes, it's peat free with added John in here, sowing and propagating for organic growers. Approved by the Soil Association. I do like to see that symbol. So yeah, it does actually look pretty good. Quite similar actually to the Dalefoot compost that I've used before. So it's nice fine texture. There's a few little bits of bark in there, but that's fine. That'll just aerate the mix. Um, yeah, quite smooth and crumbly if you've been wondering what this compost looks like. I imagine that should be quite nice to, to sow. So we're going to give that a go today. Not at all sponsored, by the way. I bought it with my own money. Okay, so I've got my big potting mix tray, which is where I like to make my mixes. So I'm going to tip a little bit of my ingredients in. Ooh. I will also be adding in some vermiculite to add some aeration because the roots need air. I'm sorry, I'm not very good with making particular measurements. I just throw it in until it looks about right. Ooh, hello boars. Yeah, I need to plant these out. I was waiting for the snow to melt before I got those new beauties in the ground. Now you can sow your seeds in so many different ways. Don't let anybody tell you that this is the way you have to do it because there's so many ways, honestly. Now my tomatoes and my basil, I'm going to sow multiple varieties in this little tray. And the reason for that is because if I make lots of rows with each variety, I'm saving real estate because this is going to go on to my heated propagator at home and then maybe under grow lights, we'll see how the lights conditions are. Once they've germinated, lights aren't essential and a heat mat isn't essential. You just want them somewhere warm, not in here at home on a window ledge near a radiator, something like that. So by sowing multiple varieties in one tray, it means I can fit more varieties and types of plant. You know, I'm going to have my basil and my tomatoes all on the heat mat. So they germinate nice and quickly. There we are. So I filled my seed tray. I'm just going to give it a tap. I love growing basil and tomatoes together. I just think they're best friends and they should never be apart. They grow so well together and they are companion plants. I'm not going to firm it down too much because now we're going to water these seed trays. There we go, two trays ready to sew. So first I'm actually going to write the labels. So what have we got? Four tomatoes and three basil. I've actually got this rather fancy new tool, um, which is perfect for seed sewing and pricking out. Although it is actually quite expensive for what it is, but I'm going to use it quite a lot to make it worth the money. So we've got four little drills there, just very, very, um, not too deep. And let's start from the right house tomato. Only got a few seeds of this one left. Oh no, there's plenty. So I'm going to try and space them out. One, two. So that one's done. What are your favourite tomato varieties to grow? I'm sure they're a lot more uh, unusual than mine. <laughs> Honestly, um, I just really don't mind about tomatoes. But yeah, sun gold is a good one. So this one is red cherry. I'll probably only grow about 
I can fit 18 plants in the tunnel. And you see all right there. Let's bring you down a bit. Yeah, so I can probably fit about 18 full-size tomato plants in my tunnel at maximum capacity. But obviously, um, I want room for my chilies as well. And I'm just going to over sow because you can always share tomato plants with your family and your friends. So it's better to have a few too many than not enough. That should do it. Tumbling Tom Red. I've never really done a proper tumbling variety, I don't think. Sun Baby. Oh, it's apparently new this season. I wonder if it has been bred from the Sun Gold. Oh, there's a few extra of those because I know a few people that might like that one. So now to finish it off, I'm just going to cover that little gap. But then also, I'm going to use a little bit of vermiculite over the top. Now vermiculite holds on to moisture. And I do find that with certain seeds, more so the basil, it just helps keep them uh, the surface of the compost nice and damp. Particularly when you're using a heat mat, it really helps the top there. Or in fact, I might as well try and cover the surface, why not? I do try to be fairly sparing because this stuff is quite expensive if you buy the small packs. I think you can get massive um, bags from like builders merchants for a lot cheaper, but then it's a very big bag to try and store. There we are, so that's the tomatoes done. Now as for the basil, these actually like a little bit of light to germinate, so I won't be making a little um, drill in the compost this time, but I'll be sowing them directly on the surface. But perhaps I'll just make a slight indentation like this, so I know where to sow them. And then I'm going to put some vermiculite on top of them rather than compost, because vermiculite allows light to penetrate through it because it's nice and airy but it won't smother the seeds. Oh, going to need some more seed of that next year. Sprinkle it along. Really tiny little seeds. So once these germinate I will be pricking them out and they'll go into their own individual pots before I then plant them out alongside the tomatoes in the tunnel um, around sort of May time. And as for the dark ones, so yes, for this I'm actually going to just sprinkle that vermiculite down that little gap. And basil actually really like to stay quite damp to germinate, so because these will be on a heat mat, I'll be keeping a close eye on that moisture level and you can actually just use like a spray mister to make sure that they're kept nice and damp which is actually what I'm going to do now. So this has just got water in it and just to dampen that surface. So that's my tomatoes and my basil now sown. These are going to go home to a nice warm spot on my heat mat and they'll have a little propagator lid over the top as well, just to secure all that moisture. And I'll be keeping a close eye on them, and they should be germinating within about 7 to 14 days, but I expect them to be quite speedy. Um, and then we'll be pricking them out and putting them into their own individual pots so that we can grow them on nice and steady and not um, rush them into too big a growing space. So next up is coriander. And... These I'm going to do in just one small pot like that. Give it a tap, give it a water. And the reason that we water before we sow the seeds is so that that compost is nice and damp and we're not going to dislodge and move those seeds all around once we, if we water it afterwards. This is one that you can also sow, sow direct once the risk of frost has gone. Ah, you know what, I'll shove them all in. 
<laughs> and then I'm just going to top these with a little bit more compost. Should probably do this over here so I don't lose it all. Just about a centimetre, not too deep. And these ones are actually going to stay inside the tunnel because they don't necessarily need a lot of warmth to germinate. And this tunnel actually gets quite warm when the sun comes out. And it looks like our nighttime temperatures are on the up for the next few weeks, which is great. Now, as for the flowers, I don't want to be faffing around with too much pricking out. So I'm actually going to sew them into this multi-cell tray. And I'll do a few rows of white, a few rows of the apricotta and a few rows of the other white. May not fill the tray, but then I've also got the um, scabious to sew as well. So I'm sure I can fill this entire tray with a mixture of cosmos and scabious. There we are. Now you know what it's time for. Some water. My Cosmos Purity Seeds are from Swan Cottage Flowers, that's Zoe, who I've been very following very closely for advice on growing flowers because um, she's fantastic at it. Now where is my metal thing gone? So I'm going to make a little hole with these because Cosmos Seeds are very long and slender. And I'm just going to pop one seed per cell because I'm very confident that these will germinate because her seed is very fresh and fantastic. Cosmos is one of those that you don't want to sow too late otherwise you just get really tall plants with all foliage and no flowers and that happened to me before and I did have a late sowing of them last year and it took until like September October for them to start flowering. This is gazebo white. Apricotta. Really looking forward to seeing what this one comes out like. Now I'm pretty sure that uh, scabious need light to germinate. And look at those seeds. How funny are those? Gives you an idea of what the seed, the flower heads actually look like. So, well, that's interesting. How do I sew these? I'm going to make a little hole, or should I say a little well, and pop them like that. And then what I do, I think I'm going to put some vermiculite on the surface. So they're not covered by soil, but they're going to stay nice and damp. And these are going to be great to grow in sort of hot, dry areas. Yes, I am enjoying my new tool. Despite it costing about £30, which I'm quite... <laughs> ashamed about. <laughs> it's just a metal stick. You can just use a spoon. But no, I got sucked into it thinking, oh, I need one of those. So don't fall for it. I'm just trying to um, make the most of it. <laughs> I will be sewing all of these because, well, why not? <laughs> and I can always save seed from them very easily if I want to grow them next year. And save seed always germinates better when it's your own homegrown stock. But yes, very excited. I haven't grown scabious before. I don't know how many flowers you get from each plant. And as for the compost, I'll just use a very light dusting of compost to go onto the surface just to cover those little holes. These guys don't necessarily need light to germinate so I'll cover them up and I won't water them because they've just had a load of water until they next dry out and that's them done. Are you still with me? 
<laughs> it's starting to get a little cold, so I'm going to have to put my jumper on. All that's left to do is to pot up my scabious, and I need to find something for it to climb, a little bamboo cane. But yes, longer days are here. Uh, what temperature in here now is 15.3. I think it was about 20 when I started this. And the lowest it got to has been 1.9 for the last week, which considering we had some snow and a bit of frost is pretty good. I'm wondering if patching up these holes has really helped sort of keep the warmth in. So yes, I've got four Kobe Scandons. That's the cup and source of vine. And I'm going to actually grow these up an archway. I've bought some, you know, those cheap metal archways you get. Um, I think that was also from Wilco's. Um, because I love the foliage and the flowers are gorgeous and I might be using them for the wedding, who knows. But I've also got a rogue tomato in here that I don't know how it's got there um, because this was homemade compost so actually that explains it. I must have put some tomatoes in the compost bin and these <laughs> the seeds germinated from that which is kind of funny. So for these I'm not going to use the seed compost because they want a bit more nutrient now so I'm going to switch to my Delphert potting compost but you can just use a nice multi-purpose compost. Uh, this one's peat-free, which is great for the environment. So I'm going to tip that in there. Just had to run and get some of my nine centimeter square pots. I love these for potting on. And then once they've filled this pot, they should be ready to go outside into the ground. Once the risk of frost has passed, which for us is around the first week of May. And yeah, I just think these are a great size. Lots of drainage holes. So I need to fill these with a little bit of compost and fit these into them. But yeah, you need quite a lot of um, support for these plants because they're, these are gonna grow absolutely bonkers I, you may remember i had one last year that i was growing up my dead tree um, i picked it up at a plant swap in i think it was may time but i think the seed was started a little bit later because apparently these need to be sown really early on so which is why i started these in i think it was actually january so i'm just gonna backfill it with some compost there and this is going to absolutely take off now that it's got loads of new root run down there Woo! those tendrils are so sticky now as for these because they're not seedlings i will be watering them in just to give them good contact with the soil below and to fill any air pockets there may be just remove some of those little weedlings. But yeah, what a beautiful little plant. But yeah, this is gonna climb to, I think they can climb to at least sort of 10 foot. So it needs a lot of support. And this is the white version. So it's the Kobe Scandens Alba which means the flowers will have a nice white colour to them, but also the foliage. I mean, isn't that absolutely beautiful? It does remind me of wisteria foliage. Oh, mind that stem. That's the most fragile part of this plant. We don't want to break that stem, but I do want to firm it in so that it stays upright. There we are. And my rogue tomato, I've got no idea what variety this is going to be, which will be quite fun. <laughs> so let's find out. It'll be much further ahead than all my others. And remember, you can sow tomato, uh, sorry, you can pot up tomatoes quite deep because along that stem is where some roots will grow. Yeah, these are going to grow so quickly now. But I won't be planting them out or even bringing them here until the temperatures warm up and the risk of frost is gone. I'm just going to give them a drop of water 
and then take these home with the rest of my tomatoes and basil seedlings or soon to be seedlings oh yeah and my random tomato place your bets on which variety you think it is although you'd have to know what i grew last year so thanks for joining me for a bit of seed sowing i'm gonna get home now with some of these and put them straight onto the heat mat and hopefully fingers crossed they should be germinating within a week or so thanks for watching take care and i'll see you soon